Dennis Brutus was born in Zimbabwe, but grew up in South Africa. He was a graduate of the University of Fort Hare. He taught English and Afrikaans at several high schools in South Africa after 1948. He was eventually dismissed for his vocal criticism of apartheid. He was banned for his political activities. While in Mozambique, he was arrested and returned to South Africa. He was shot while trying to escape. Brutus was sent to Robben Island for 16 months. He was in the cell next to Nelson Mandela. After his release Brutus left South Africa and went into exile in Britain. He was eventually unbanned by the South African government in 1990 and returned to South Africa, based at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. He later settled in Cape Town, where he died of prostate cancer on December 26, 2009. Black, green and gold at sunset pageantry. And stubbled graves expectant of eternity. In bride's white, nun's white veils the nurses gush their bounty. Of red wine cloaks, frothing the bugle dirging slopes. Salute. And ponder all this hollow panoply. For one whose gifts the mud devours, with our hopes. O oh, all you frustrate ones, powers doomed in dirt. Aborted, not by death, but carrying books of birth. Arise. The brassy shout of freedom stirs our earth. Not death, but death as it tyrannicides our ground. And plots our narrow cells of pain, defeat, and dearth. Better that we should die, than that we should lie down. There are two equal stanzas and a specific rhyme scheme. A, 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 B, A, B, and C, 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 D, C. The formality of the poem mirrors the formal rites and rituals of a funeral ceremony. In stanza 1 the tone is calm and reverent. In stanza 2 the tone is angry and contemptuous. The mood in stanza 1 is melancholic. The mood in stanza 2 is vengeful. The poet's intention was to highlight the plight of the oppressed. To make a strong political statement, that is, to voice his opposition to the apartheid regime. It's about a young woman called Valencia Majambozi, an African woman who managed to qualify as a doctor after enormous hardship and sacrifice by her parents. She got her medical degree and then, by an incredible irony, just after Valencia had completed her internship, she died during the Sharpeville massacre. The speaker went to her funeral. The poem is about the years of sacrifice that end in nothing, and you could read the poem entirely on that level or just as an expression of frustrated and aborted hopes. Oppressed people cannot live their lives fully. He urges active resistance, arise. He ultimately states that death is a better fate than yielding to defeat and dearth. The poem deals with the following themes. Years of sacrifice that end in nothing. Aborted hopes. The fight against injustice. The desire for freedom and human sacrifice for a cause. The poem is a tribute to Valencia Majambozi. This makes the poem personal. The poet refers to a specific person and that has a greater impact on the reader. This emphasizes that all her dreams and hopes have been destroyed by death. This conveys a sense of frustration and aborted hopes. The poem is operating on a political level. The resistance movement in South Africa has its own flag, as opposed to the state flag, the resistance movement's flag is black, green and gold. The choice of those colors at the beginning of the poem is not an accident. Also, many of the colleagues of this doctor attended her funeral wearing their university robes, these were black caps and gowns, but often with a gold hood indicating an arts degree, green indicating a science degree, so again, you have a combination of black, green and gold. At sunset means the end of the day, which is symbolic of death. This creates a somber mood with connotations of darkness and sadness. A pageant is a formal ceremony with symbolic clothing and rituals. This creates the impression that it is just for show, because all of that does not matter now. All hopes and dreams are lost with her death.
The stubble is the stalks of crops left sticking out after a harvest, or the remains of a person's beard left on their face after shaving. This implies that the graves were in a state of neglect and they looked untidy or unkempt as they are covered in dead grass stalks. Personification. The graveyard is portrayed as being hungry for more bodies because death is inevitable. This emphasizes that we all have to die. The word eternity creates some ambiguity. Either the dead will remain in their graves for an eternity, or the belief that the afterlife will not end. Nurses from the hospital attended the funeral. In South Africa the nurses wore cloaks which were lined with bright red, the red wine. Other nurses at the funeral wore white, which echo the nuns in their habits in bride white, nuns white veils. The nurses in the hospital are willing to give everything to save the lives of those who fight for liberation. The connotations of brides and nuns implies innocence, purity, holiness and a new life. The poet uses the diction to indicate the large number of people at the funeral. Gush means to flow out fast. In this case it indicates how many nurses there are. Bounty refers to something in abundance. There are many people showing their grief. Frothing illustrates the nurses in their red cloaks and white dresses that look like frothing red wine surrounding the graveyard. The vivid sound imagery emphasizes the somber atmosphere. The bugle dirging. A dirge is a funeral song. This creates again the idea of the ritualistic nature of this funeral. It creates a militant element to the poem. Slopes literally means something that is uneven. Or something that goes up and down. This could be the sound of the bugle. Or maybe there is another option. The slopes around the graveyard are also personified, as though the land itself is mourning the young doctor. Salute means to honor or literally salute the dead as one would a soldier. It is a gesture of respect. The exclamation mark emphasizes that this is a command. A panoply is a splendid display. The poet states that this is a meaningless ceremony with flags and speeches. Meaningless because it changes nothing. The speaker asks the reader to contemplate the implications of this funeral and death in general. He encourages the reader to look further than the display of flags, funeral flowers, all the people and the sad music as it lacks sincerity. He calls it a hollow display. One refers to Valencia. Gifts refers to her ability as a doctor to heal and bring comfort to others. Devour, eat greedily, hungrily or quickly. The mud of a graveyard is compared to a hungry mouth. The personification emphasizes that all her hopes and those of her people are now buried in the earth. This creates a tone of despair and sadness. The poet uses apostrophe as he addresses the dead directly. Frustrate means to prevent the success of something or to cause irritation and anger by preventing dreams from being realized. The dead are described as powers tombed in dirt, their potential is buried because of their deaths. The dead are powerful enough to cause frustration to the government rather than being passively frustrated. Aborted means the ending of life before it has begun. Death is written with a capital letter, death is personified. The life of a black person begins as a kind of death. From the moment of birth, you are given this past book. You cease to be a human being from the point of birth. You are devoured. You become carrion, dead flesh. This ties in with the notion of abortion. The poet regards the black people as being dead, not because they have died, but because their freedom is taken away by the past books. The apartheid government is even more cruel and deadly than death itself. It is not death that kills people, but the past book, books of birth, which symbolizes the cruel apartheid laws.
the dead are addressed directly and told to rebel or arise. Against the government. It literally means stand up. But also a reference to rise up. Which means, start a revolution. Another command and a defiant tone. A call to arms. Freedom is capitalized to show that it is important, as it is personified as shouting to wake the dead. Describing freedom shout as brassy, refers to the bugle in line 4, which was used to play the dirge. Here, music does not send the dead to their rest, but awakens them. One of the insignia used by Nazis was the death's head, the so-called Totenkopf. Nazi Germany was a tyrannical government that committed atrocities in the 20th century. Death is personified as the grim reaper with his scythe, a harvesting tool, used to harvest or collect the dead. The poet compares the South African apartheid government to the death head wearing Nazis in World War II. A tyrant is a ruthless and cruel dictator. According to the poet, it is not death that is destroying South Africa, but death head tyranny. Scythes means to cut something violently. Our ground is a reference to the land, where the Group Areas Act excluded people of color. The word plots is a clever pun. A plot can be a small piece of land perhaps a grave. Plot can be used as a verb. To plot means to plan something, often a revolution. The narrow cells of pain could be the graves in a graveyard. The prison cells where prisoners of the apartheid government had been jailed, or the small houses in disadvantaged areas that people of color had been forced to live in, as a result of the Group Areas Act. Dearth means that things that are in short supply, example food or basic necessities. The poet implies that pain, suffering and death was deliberately caused by the apartheid government. If a person lies down when attacked or arrested, they show that they are surrendering or submitting. The poet implies that it is better for people to resist apartheid and die, rather than give up or surrender. There is no full stop after we should lie down. This implies that there is no end to resistance and no surrender. This line also implies that the poet has come to terms with the tragedy of the young doctor's death, she died, rather than choosing to lie down or surrender to apartheid, and the poet sees this as better. The poet uses we and therefore identifies with the struggle against apartheid. Live free or die hard.